Hey everyone, how are you? So in my previous video on uh, using the mat.theme mixin which has been introduced in Angular Material version 19 to set up your Angular Material themes, I used the Azure palette and some other color palettes which are actually pre-built color palettes provided by the Angular Material team. But a lot of you on my comment section basically asked how to actually create custom color palettes. So here is Sashi, I don't know what his name is, but great explanation made how we should define custom theme palette with custom colors in Material version 19. And then we have somebody here as well, below here. Can you make a video on adding custom color palettes instead of pre-built color palettes? And there are other comments saying the same thing. So I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to actually create custom color palettes because oftentimes you have a brand that your client wants to follow and you want to create the material theme according to your brand colors. So in this video, I'm going to cover all of that. And also, we are going to build up a theme switcher using our own custom colors like this. So you can see that it is very similar to the Angular Material theming official documentation, if you can see here. But these colors are all our own. These are all our custom colors that we have set up. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so first let's start with the Angular Material documentation and, and see what it says about custom color palettes. So they have a section on pre-built color palettes which lists all of the color palettes here. But what if you want to use some other palette? Well, they have a custom color palette section is here as well. And in this, they said that you have a palette generation schematic, which is provided by the Angular Material team itself, which you can run in your terminal and you can uh, generate a custom color. Now, this has been there before as well, but in version 19.1, a new thing has been added to it and that has made my life so much easier. And that is that it outputs in a CSS variables format as well. So before it only output in a SAS map format, which we needed to plug into the mat theme mix in somewhere here. But now we can also just simply output it in the CSS variables format, which I personally like because we can actually precisely define our colors there. And also it's so easy to use because it's just CSS. Okay. Okay. So let's start with generating a simple material custom color palette by using this uh, schematic here. Okay, so let's just copy the schematic here and let's go in our application here. This is just a simple application. Uh, Angular material has been added to it. And also we have added some basic, you can see some components so that we can actually showcase how the theming works, okay? And when you do ng generate, Angular material theme color is going to ask you for some prompts here, okay? So the first prompt is what hex color should be used to generate the empty theme. Now this is the primary color palette and this is actually the only thing that is required in this schematic. So this will be your brand color that your client provides. Now you can also have a secondary color and we are going to come to that in a bit. But for the primary color, for example, I want to add as a sample, I want to add a green color and we can add a hex color here like this. You can paste this here. So this is a green color that I want to use as the primary color palette. Then it also asks you for the secondary color palette. Now, in my case, I'm just going to use the primary color palette for my theme switches, so I don't need it. But in case that you have a sort of a harmonious or matching secondary color that has been provided to you by your client or by your company or anybody who wants to brand your app, you can actually provide it here. I'm just going to leave it empty. Now, when you leave it empty, it's going to auto-generate uh, your secondary and your tertiary as well color palette according to uh, the primary color itself, okay, automatically. And then it also asks you for the neutral color palette. The neutral is basically the surfaces and the backgrounds. I'm going to keep it empty. And then it also asks for a high contrast value over at mixins. I'm going to just ignore this and do no here. And then it asks for you where you want to actually place this theme file, this custom color th theme file. So I'm going to paste this in a special folder here, which I'm going to call the themes folder. Since I'm building a theme switcher and a theme switcher will have multiple themes. So I'm going to put all of them in the themes file and then I'm going to name it as green as well. Okay, great. And then this last one is the most important thing that I really liked and this has been newly introduced in version 19.1. So make sure to have your application and your material version on 19.1 to actually benefit from this. So this says that do you want to generate a SAS file? I'm saying that I don't want to generate a SAS file because I just want the CSS variables directly. So I'm just going to do no here. Okay. Great. So it has, just like that, created the green theme here for us. And now you can see here that it has generated simply an HTML selector here. And within that, it has all of those variables 
widths derived from your color on this. So these are basically all of your system design tokens, not only your colors, but your typography and your other basic system design tokens, which the angular material components need to render correctly. Okay. Now, once we have this generated and it is being scoped to HTML, we actually don't need the mat.theme mixin anymore because the mat.theme mixin, as I explained in my previous video, also does the same thing. It actually generates the CSS variable, these the same CSS variables at compile time. Okay. So let's comment this out. And also we want to import this theme file here. So we're going to do import themes, green theme here. So that means it's going to be a part of our application now and let's save this. And now we can see our nice little green theme and all of our components match that green theme. Great. So this is the simplest way that you can add a custom color palette. So one more thing that you would find a bit odd here would be the use of light dark variables here. Now this is the modern CSS syntax for a sort of defining both the light and the dark modes in one statement, color values in one statement. Now, if you want more information about this, I've covered all of this in uh, a separate video and you'll find it in the card above. So you can look into that if you want more information, but the gist of it is that you can actually define the light and the dark shades for the light and dark mode in one uh, CSS property. And then you can use the color scheme property here to actually switch between light and dark. Or if you do it light and dark like this, it's going to switch into it according to the system's current theme automatically, okay? So, but currently we are just using the light mode of this. So it's going only going to use the light shades here. Okay. So this is a real nice thing that material generates all of this automatically. Uh, you don't have to actually worry about the light in a dark mode yourself. Okay. Okay. So now you can see that our material components look really good here according to our custom theme. Now, how do we create a switcher? Well, for a switcher, it's really simple. We just create four more because I have five colors. I want five colors to be in my switcher. I create four more themes on the same pattern. I'm just going to quickly create them and then we're going to continue. Okay. So I've created four more colors here. So I have created a green theme, an orange theme, a purple theme and a red theme. Okay. Each with its own primary colors here. And then we have the deep blue theme. So I have created also a dark theme, which I'm calling the deep blue dark theme here. Okay. So this, this has a color scheme as dark, just so we can test out the dark theme as well. Okay. So these are the themes that we want. Now we want to import all of them into my styles file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file in the themes in which I'm going to encapsulate all of this. So I'm going to do themes.css and I'm going to do import all of them one by one here. One, two, three, four, five. You have five colors here. And then this themes.css uh, file I'm going to import here. Okay. This is going to save our import files a bit. And let's save this. Now, all of these themes are now part of our application. You'll also notice one little thing that I've done here. So for the other themes, you can see the orange theme. I have actually renamed the selector here to the specific theme name dash theme. So I've given it a specific selector so that it's not applied directly to my application. It only applies when I add this class specifically using the theme switcher to my body or to my HTML of the application. Okay. So I've done it for all of these, the purple theme, the red theme. I just need it for the green theme. So the green theme still has HTML, which means it's going to be applied as default. But we actually just want to do it like this as well so that we can have a consistent way of applying the themes. And we're going to apply a default theme through our theme service, which we're going to create. Okay. So let's save this. And now when you see it's going to be unthemed now because no theme is being applied now directly in the HTML. So what we're going to do here is now that we are going to go in our code. So we have already created a theme service here and I have a type of a theme. The ID is basically your theme name, which is the green, the red, the uh, orange and all of the color names. And the primary color is basically the shade that we are using for, which we used for generation of this color, custom color palette. And then we have the display name, which we use to display on the uh, selector that we'll have the menu item. Great. So, and then we have uh, in the theme service, we have a, uh, themes uh, variable here which is an array and we actually define all of our themes here like this great so what do we need to do firstly we need to actually define a current theme here so we're going to do current theme and this is going to be a signal it's going to be a type of theme and we're going to just set the first theme which is the deep blue dark theme okay so we want to keep it as default then we're going to define a get themes function so that our selector can get all of these themes to render it on the ui 
Great, and then we have a set theme. So when the user clicks on the menu item, it actually finds a theme. It uses the name of the theme and then it finds a theme and then it sets the theme in my signal that we have. Okay, then how do we update the class according to this current theme? We can use the effects primitive in signals. It's really useful for these purposes. And so we are going to create an update theme class effect, which is going to get the current theme first and then it's going to remove any previous theme that have been set on it. And then it's going to add this specific theme with the ID and with dash theme, something like this. And this is going to set the same class that we have defined here in our custom color palettes files. Okay, great. So we have all this set up. Now we'll see that since this is all set up and we have our default theme here, you will see that it is going to set our default theme here automatically. Okay. So this is our default theme now. And if you change the default theme, you can also see, for example, if you make this the green one, you can see that our default theme is going to change to green. Great. So our switching is working. Now we need to allow the user to actually do this. Okay. So let's uh, go back to the default here. And then let's go to our app.component here in which we have our toolbar here. So what we want here is that we want to an icon just like this icon here. And then we want a material menu which will open through that icon. Okay, a matte icon button. So we're going to create a matte icon button here. So let's create a button here, matte icon button. And we're going to create a trigger for the theme menu. We're going to create the theme menu in a bit. Okay, and this is what we want the icon to be. And then we have the button here. Okay, so we have the button and then we have a matte menu here that we have defined and the theme menu will be the matte menu that we exported and then so that we can link it with the matte menu trigger for here. Remember to also import the matte menu module and the matte button module and the icon module so that all of our components work here. All right. So here what we're going to do is we are just going to also inject the theme service here so that we can use it. And then we can uh, use the theme service to get themes function, which we just declared. We are going to track it on the theme.id because it's going to be unique. And then we have a button inside of it, which is the matte menu item button. And it's going to show the display name so that we can switch between them. Okay. And on clicking of it, we can use a set theme function, which is going to set the specific theme.id and it's going to switch that theme. Okay. Okay. So this looks nice. And you can now see that we have our nice icon here and you have your nice switcher here, which you can see. But you can see that it needs a bit more work on making sort of a preview alongside the menu so that the user knows exactly which color shade it is. So we're going to modify this a bit. So within this button, we are going to actually style things a bit. We're going to add a div here. And as it turns out, my AI is suggesting me that, I, <laughs> that I've already created this before. But you can actually add a theme menu item class here, which I've defined here. So it's just a simple flex. And it's giving a gap of 12 pixels. And then it's there's a color view style, which is basically your circle in which the color appears. So it has a border radius of 50%. So the different thing about this color preview is that it has the style dot background color style binding, which dynamically binds to the theme dot primary color. So that it shows the primary color in the form of a color. Okay. And then we have the display name as before. Okay. So let's try this out and let's see how this looks. And you can now see that we have our nice colors here so that the user can see exactly how this looks. Great. And that is a nice and simple theme switcher. Now, if you want to look uh, into it in more detail, the code is available on GitHub. The link to that is given in the description. Okay, so our theme switcher looks really good here. Now, one problem, if you were monitoring it a bit closely, you are going to see that the color, the primary color that we used to generate this custom color palette is a bit different from what was generated as the primary color here. Okay. Now, this might be a problem or this might not be a problem. If it's not a problem for you that the primary color is a bit different from the brand color, it's okay. But if it's a problem, then because we're using the CSS variables, you can just go ahead and you can update this manually as well, wherever you would like to. Okay. So you can cut paste it here and you can now see that we have the same color that we wanted in the primary color directly matching with the material primary color as well. But what if you want to change a lot of these colors? It might get a bit more difficult for you to do that. And since there are a lot of CSS variables, uh, it might get a bit weary for you. So in that case, you might want to check out my helpful utility that I created called the Easy Angular Material Theme Builder. Now I created a landing page for it recently to better showcase its capabilities. 
So I have the landing page and I have a component section both now. And if you can try it out here, you can see that we can change these colors. Now the great thing about this is that it only requires six colors that you need to set up. And then I have created sort of mappings between this color and those colors and the material components so that you can see that all of these colors map really nicely to the um, angular material components and you can test it out on this material theme builder as well the link you can see here material theme builder .com. and if i show you for example this green color for example if i want this green color as my brand color here and i copy this and i paste this here you will see that my landing page basically updates in real time so this is really helpful when you want to create real-time switchers and since the colors are about six in number they're not that difficult to store in a backend or in a database and you can actually provide them at runtime allow the user to set it at runtime as well so if you want to try it out visit this site and just check out the video the original video in which i explain how i came up with this and you're most welcome to get it if you would like to to make your life easier when you are designing the theme for your angular material app Great. So I hope this was a helpful guide to creating custom color palettes and it answers the queries of those who were asking on my channel about this. If you like this video, uh, please uh, hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. So this video can reach more people and more Angular developers can learn more about Angular material and its awesome features. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with another interesting Angular topic to discuss with you.